Let's talk a little bit about something where you you, you got to put a man on the street. Yes. Um, which, is, and not to be, to put too fine a point on it. Please. Anybody who builds something, changes something, built, puts a restaurant, adds a house on, because we're starting to see an uptick a little bit in, in land sales, so mm -hmm. we're expecting more homes mm -hmm. to, to come up in the next uh, couple of years here. Uh, the process to get a thing built, mm -hmm. the construction requirements and whatever, is, is still a little cumbersome. Well, Just because, I, I, if you look at the regulations the state hands down oh, to us goodness. here, it, it's it's. If you've ever built something, you go, well, that's crazy. But you you still have to have inspectors to go out and make sure that's what's going up today, is is up to code. Can John, you talk about that a little sure, bit? Sure, John, you're so right. And in, in beginning with uh, our New Year gift that we get every year from Sacramento, which is normally a mm -hmm. book of new regulations mm -hmm. that our state legislators. Uh, in their infinite wisdom, wind up adopting and layering more and more in terms of what well, we they, need to do. They have to justify why it takes more people to run the state and and costs more. But then they will <coughs> send I'm what sorry. we call an unfunded mandate down to the local mm -hmm. level, and then uh, go to this, but there's no money. And 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 it also is it is an affront to local control instead of trying to decide which the best regulation or law that we ought to have here for mm -hmm. a building. We're handed down from Sacramento. Um, a, a range of um, new regulations related to building every year. Mm -hmm. Fire code, building code, uh, health and safety, and it's just remarkable. But nonetheless, that should not be the burden for the architect or the engineer or the contractor. We try to take that and distill it down to something that actually makes sense, and then we revise our codes to be able to articulate what that is. We bring in the uh, uh, the Contractors Association on at least a quarterly basis, if not more often, mm. to share with them what has come down from Sacramento, how we need to implement it. Another how, good reason to use licensed contractors. Oh, without somebody a doubt. That's, that's up to speed on all this stuff so you don't get the inspector out there and go, well, that ain't going to work. Yes, yeah. and, and rather than have uh, the builder, the architect, or the engineer go all around town to 12 different offices, we have a one-stop building center. Mm -hmm. And the one-stop building center uh, is anchored by something we call a development review committee. And we bring in people from uh, water, from Verizon, from uh, gas, fire, uh, fire, uh, the planning, building, engineering, all into one room mm -hmm. with the same set of plans. And then we go around the table and try to advise as best we can, how can we get that project uh, plan, how can we get that, uh, that project uh, presented, how can we get that project entitled to go forward. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest difference that we have right now. We wish that we can have a stop on new regulations like right. from Sacramento. Well, because uh, you, you did a, a, a one of Nancy Kennedy's shows, yes. which is, on, by the way, on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 and 8 o'clock. Uh, a while yes. back when we were chatting about one of the issues you have is you, I, I could come in and get an approval from you, mm -hmm. and I'm moving ahead and I'm doing everything that it is is appropriate at the time. Yes. And then you get something from from on high, and it's retroactive. Oh, it's my, amazing. My, my approvals are, are out the window. And you have to start all over again if you <sighs> comport back to that state law that's just been adopted. Can we just cut the phone line to Sacramento <laughs> and, and say we didn't know? Or, <laughs> or maybe you I'm be. sorry. That's not really what we want to do. But, but we have found ways to get around uh -huh. to get around that, to mitigate that, reduce that, and abate that kind of pressure that's in our mm -hmm. building community. And you're right. We're at a point where we're, we're starting to see a slight uptick. Mm -hmm. And contractors are going back to work. There are more commitments that are being made. Even lenders are, are stepping forward to make commitments that we haven't had in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So with that, we are embracing that, and we're ready to go from a one-stop building center. And again, if we need to double up or triple the amount of inspections that we do in one day, we'll do that. Mm -hmm. If you've made progress from the morning to the afternoon, we'll send a second inspector back out in the afternoon to be able to sign off and go forward on mm -hmm. the project. Those are the approaches uh, that we think are real strong to really embrace what is uh, very necessary to bring back our economy. Sure, because, you know, as, as we learned a few years ago, because there were, were naysayers oh. that said, oh, don't build anything else, don't remodel anything, leave everything as it is. And the only people that will be affected by that are real estate agents because they won't be able to sell houses. Well, what we learn? Furniture. The, the people buying shower curtains and, and doing the remodels and all that kind of stuff. It hurts everything down the line. And I think we've learned that, again, the, the cornerstone of what we do have up here is our real estate industry. 
that has many well, facets. That has many facets uh, from the uh, the second home owner mm -hmm. to the year-round resident mm -hmm. to the contractors to the hardware stores and lumber yards that we have to again um, the quality of our community and mm -hmm. being able to reinvest and make sure that our dwellings are contemporary in nature are competitive in the open marketplace and again to have well and safe well without a doubt yeah. mm -hmm. without a doubt safety. do you do you have now when I when we first looked at at Big Bear which was back in 1991. Mm -hmm. Uh, at that time, we had a potential for, I think it was 32, and I'm, pardon me, Steve, if I don't have these exactly right, 32,000 dwelling units were possible in, mm -hmm. in the Valley. We had about 6,000 full-time residents. Mm -hmm. So almost everything, the largest percentage, is second homes. Yes. Is that, is that ratio still in there? I mean, where, where are we at with land? and Because and, we're, we're surrounded by national forest. You can't, you can't get into that. You can get into that, but again, some of the attempts from, again, Sacramento mm -hmm. was to hand down a regional housing needs assessment, something called RENA, that said, gee whiz, with the given land that you have, maybe you can't go out and expand into the forest, mm -hmm. but you can make your individual plots of land to be uh, developed in a more dense way. And instead of putting... Now, is that part of its... Um, um, yeah low-income housing thing? No, it's, no. A, it's actually a, a mandate of how many units you should build to do your fair share of the housing stock so in California. So they want thousand square foot lots? Well, they, <laughs> <laughs> they had they had some pretty crazy ideas and as recently as, as a year ago, uh, Sacramento was telling us that we needed to build another 200 units within our community. Because now, we, we're only talking, we're not talking about Bear City, we're talking no, about Bear Lake. Bear 200, Lake. how many we have now? Uh, we have about uh, 10,000 uh, units, and again, as we both know, about two-thirds of those are right. vacant every night. Mm -hmm. uh, and how, so, how, many, how many lots? Um, I think we're at 8,700, 8, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. But again, uh, Sacramento suggested that we needed, just off their, um, their computer programs, uh, suggested that Big Bear Lake ought to build at least 200 new units. Well, sure, you need a place for all those college students to stay while they're going to school, and as, as you said, <coughs> as you're summarizing <laughs> here, this is quite preposterous. So we spent the better part of, um, of two, uh, 2011 to deal with that, to fight that, and turn that back. Mm -hmm. And in turn, we were able to reverse that entire Sacramento demand by adopting a new housing element mm -hmm. that laid out the potential if a builder were so inclined and had financing to build in certain parts of the city, mm -hmm. but also to demonstrate that we're a unique resort community. We're a unique community of second home owners. Mm -hmm. We're a unique community in terms of having a, a wide supply of housing of all different types that's sufficient for our population and our need up on a mountaintop. Mm -hmm. And in turn, for once, Sacramento agreed with us. And now Sacramento says that we need to add four new housing units no? instead of okay. 200.